Hey up everybody and welcome back to the Audu Cycling YouTube channel. I'm going to be taking a look at my VeloGame 2022 team today and giving you a bit of review as to what went down in my team. Of course, I've been a bit radio silent the last few weeks. That's because I've been on holiday in France watching the tour. So I haven't really had the time to be making videos for all the Stage Hunter stuff. So I apologise for that, but I am back now. And we'll be getting a few more videos up, including probably the tour of Poland and also like the San Sebastian and stuff like that. But let's go and have a look at my team and see how I actually did. It wasn't a particularly great performance on my part, I must admit. We finished 10,000-ish out of 26,000. And I also dropped pretty badly in the stage uh, race championships from about 10th to 84th. So it wasn't brilliant for me. Um, that was largely because I didn't pick Pagaccia. Of course, if you saw my video uh, before the tour, I was deliberating between two teams and there's one with Roglic and one with Pagaccia. And now I went with the one with Roglic and of course that hasn't worked out too great. He did get some points, but you know it wasn't as many as Pagaccia did. Uh, the good news is that I did have Vingegaard, who won the race, got 3,000 points. That was really good. That really saved the team. And I also had Wout Van Aert. So at least I had those two kind of big scorers to kind of tide me through. But the, the rest of the team is pretty average. Maybe Mass Pedersen um, was, was above average. He got nearly a 1,000 points for an 8-point rider. That's really good. I think the only other 8-point rider who did better than him was Pidcock, who I was never really considering picking. Pedersen, uh, he would have got more, of course, but he fell ill in the last few days. So he didn't contest the stage uh, 19 sprint or the stage 21 sprint on the Champs-Élysées. So overall, the team could have done a bit better. Uh, the main down points were, of course, Roglic, you know, but that was an unpredictable kind of crash that, that happened. So really, I can't really blame myself for picking Roglic there. I think it was a good choice. Uh, it just didn't work out overall. That's just the way the things go sometimes. Caruso and Guerrero were both just bad picks. Uh, I was really high on them before the race. They both looked really good in the Dauphiné. And that was really kind of my main reasoning. They were going to go into this race and look really good. Guerrero was talking a big game about doing GC. And he looked really good to probably to go and take some stage wins. I definitely think he could have taken perhaps two or three stage wins. And Caruso, I don't really know what happened. He was looking so good at the Dauphiné. He didn't test positive for COVID. He don't, I don't think he crashed. He just really underperformed of any DNF for race. Um, I was really expecting more from Caruso, definitely a top 10 or something from him. And, you know, when you consider that my alternative, I could have gone with Godou and Mienkes in these two slots. It's quite disappointing, really, uh, that I went with this option. And that really dropped me quite a few points. Uh, the young classified riders weren't too bad, uh, all in all. Uh, Kung was selected by a lot of people. I strongly recommended him uh, to all you lot. And he got about 400 points, which isn't so bad. Uh, all in all, I was expecting they'd do a lot better in the TTs, though he didn't even finish inside the top 10 of either of the time trials, which is really surprising for Kung. And a lot of the rest of the time, he was tied to David Godou to help with his GC ambitions, which, fair enough, Godou did finish in fourth place, so they did a really good job there. Uh, Kron and Verona, I was expecting a bit more from them, really, but um, yeah, Verona... He did get in some breaks and he was looking quite uh, lively more in the latter half of the race. But again, he was chained to uh, Enrique Mass, who ended up DNFing the race. Um, so that was a bit of a shame, really. I thought that Verona would get a bit more freedom. Um, it turns out that Jorgensen was the better pick of the two, which is a shame because I was actually thinking of going with Jorgensen instead of Andreas Kron. Uh, Kron would have done good, probably like top four in that stage, which Michael Matthews won. But uh, he had like a puncture, so I was really unfortunate. Actually, Cron would have actually got somewhere more in the region of like 350 points. Uh, but that was just very unlucky. I was thinking of going with Jorgensen or maybe even Madwa in his position. So uh, it's a bit of a shame really with the unclassified riders. But um, they did okay. And they just got like a couple hundred points each. But the team overall, I think it was pretty, it was a pretty average performance. Definitely some exceptional performances from Vingegaard and Wattman Art, but then some other riders who didn't do so quite so great. So overall, it was a pretty average performance. And uh, hopefully next time when we get to the Tour of Poland and the Vuelta España, the last two races in the stage race uh, championship, I'll do a bit better. And then I can claw myself back up towards kind of a top 50 in that championship. But let me know, how did you get on in the comments down below? Who are your good picks? Who are your bad picks? And all that is left to say to keep safe out there and I'll see you with a tour of Poland more than likely. Salut!